Craig has just shown us uh, how to take away responsibility immediately from a government official to, to other quarters. Thank you very much. You have actually introduced uh, some next speakers. We have been told that the nucleus of the environment we are apt to create should be the center for research and education. And we have started discussing the subject with the leading Russian and world universities and research centers. In the forefront is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which we visited, a powerful delegation toured MIT. Now we have another group of MIT coming to Russia. And you can see what is going on, what is happening, what we're doing. Uh, Rafael Reif will share with us his first impressions of what the MIT group has seen in Russia. And they will report whether or not, uh, in their view, we have prospects ahead. Uh, I should have guessed that when uh, a, a wonderful front row seat was reserved for me that I was going to be asked to say something. I should have realized that early on as I was walking into the room. Uh, indeed, we are, we are spending, a few colleagues and I, uh, we spent this week here in Russia. We have visited institutions of uh, research and education in Moscow and in, in Novosibirsk and now in St. Petersburg. Uh, I can tell you that we have long admired uh, long admired the scientific and engineering accomplishments of Russia. And, uh, and, and now Russia has this tremendous ambition uh, to modernize its economy, to diversify it, and they want to add to the list of accomplishments uh, to move ideas from the research labs to the marketplace. Uh, I see tremendous potential there, and we are here uh, visiting and trying to explore ways in which uh, we can participate in this tremendous, exciting opportunity. As Craig said, uh, this is, uh, in any nation that wants to stay at the forefront, this is really uh, not an option. This is something that, that you must do. And, uh, uh, and I can tell you that uh, in addition to the reputation of the science and engineering in Russia, what we have seen in these last few days of traveling here confirms exactly your reputation. So there is tremendous potential here. I think the only, why, the only minor point that I would add to, to what Craig said earlier is that an important component of this is how to incentivize the tremendous research talent you have in your higher education and research institutions, incentivize them to think in terms of the marketplace. And that's part of the culture that some of you have commented on, and I think that's a, a, a major challenge moving forward. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, uh, Craig. Uh, Thank you. Craig, would you be prepared to lecture at the Education Center at Skolkovo? Uh, I, uh, of course. And uh, <laughs> is this getting even with me for preempting you earlier? I guess we could continue this interchange. Uh, but you know, th I think there are there are wonderful uh, ways to educate people on entrepreneurship. You know, the, the, the society and culture has to support. The government has to support. Uh, the research and education has to support. But you can also teach people the nuts and bolts of entrepreneurship: how to be, how to start a company, what you need to do, and I think the. Uh, the university, the business school at Skolkovo, uh, can uh, be an act participant in that. In fact, I think I'm leaving this meeting to go watch an MOU be signed there on entrepreneurship with the business school. So that has to be an integral part of it. But I think the the founding members of the board and, and others would be more than happy to share their experiences and talents. But you, you don't want just us old guys doing it. You want the young, active entrepreneurs to be involved as well. And we need the 20-somethings to have this fire in their belly to do this. And this, this is part of the incentive structure that Raphael mentioned. It's part of what the government can do to create a system where 
entrepreneurship not only creates something, but rewards those who create it and rewards the venture capitalists who participate, rewards the individuals who participate, and they in turn reward society by creating wealth. Спасибо. Конечно, мы понимаем, что и молодые люди тоже. Of course, younger experts should be involved, and we're hopeful they will be. But we would like you, uh, and not us, government officials, to select the agenda and curriculum and what have. I thought we were finally in the area of energy efficiency, but we are not there yet. Okay. It was quite correctly said that yet another element of our plan is to ensure the involvement of up-to-date financial institutions such as venture funds. We have some representation, venture companies represented here. Axel Partners is a company which is represented here by the gentleman, and I'm asking him a question. Uh, do we have rules in Russia for the venture business? Or do venture companies at this point just observe what is happening rather than getting involved? Hi, uh, my name is Joe uh, Schoendorf, and I'm with Axel Partners. Uh, it's kind of a special week for me, if I might. It was uh, my daughter graduated last week, uh, unfortunately, from Princeton with an engineering degree, not from MIT. And I was sitting there watching her, and I thought about it 44 years ago to the day I graduated with an engineering degree. Uh, I wasn't good enough to get an MIT. And I turned my car west, and I went to work for a small company uh, called Hewlett Packard. They were $200 million, Craig, I think, Intel. It was 66. You were still two years away from starting Intel, at, I think, at that point. And John, you were probably 12, 13 years away from getting Cisco going. So I had a chance to watch Silicon Valley grow up. I've spent the last 25 years in venture capital. Uh, we've done probably three to 400 companies. The one company you probably all would know in here is we gave a 19-year-old boy $10 million to start a company called Facebook. We were the first investors. We have funds in Europe, we have funds in Israel, we have funds in China, we have funds in India. We've just done our first deal here in Russia called Kupi. I've come here, how many people know Kupi? Because I didn't until about two or three months ago when I met the entrepreneur. Good. Uh, and the answer to your question is, we are doing both. We found a deal, we're jumping in, and we're going to learn. Uh, let me offer some strong advice, and I want to take off on what you said, Craig, and I'll summarize it this way. Don't wait. You have the brilliance to get started and while on one hand it's a great thing to attract a Cisco or a Google or an Intel or a Nokia to come here, I think the greater goal is something different, which is to build your own Nokia, to build your own Google, to build your own Cisco. And that's a long process. You've got the entrepreneurs here that can do that and what I've learned, I've learned one lesson in, in 25 years of being a venture capitalist. It starts and ends with the entrepreneur. I remember walking into my first company, the first investment I ever personally made called Macromedia. If you use Flash on the internet, that's the company. And the founder had a little sign on his, that he put in granite on his office. And it said, the common man accepts the world as it is. The uncommon man changes the world to meet his needs. Therefore, all progress counts on the uncommon man. Well, venture capital, good venture capital, seeks out that uncommon man and then nurtures him. And here's kind of the final message I want to give. You know, John, when, you, when Cisco was formed in 1988, IBM owned 
the networking business. Without telling the whole story, five years later, they sold their business to Cisco because Cisco was moving very rapidly in the right direction. There's a key word besides entrepreneur, and it's where I think this whole project comes in, and that's speed. Cisco didn't have more money than IBM. It didn't have smarter people. It certainly didn't have a bigger marketing and sales force. It didn't have any more intellectual property. It had a vision, and it had an ability to execute extraordinarily rapidly without, and if somebody got in their way, they knocked them down. So while you're building this great dream, which I'm very supportive of, find the entrepreneurs here in Russia. Bring in people like Axel Partners, and there's another dozen venture capitalists from Silicon Valley and from Europe who would be delighted to work with you. Find the entrepreneurs that are here, nurture them, and learn what it takes not to slow them down. That's my message, and thank you very much. Thanks so much.